So I'm cooking a piece of Cy Swan grass-fed beef for lunch on my wood stove in my shop in a carbon steel pan that was made by Ryan Sandin, Stagecoach Forge. Ryan has fairly recently moved into Douglas County and he's a good addition. Nate went over there the other day just to show you his shop, his tools, the things he makes and how he makes them, including this really pretty nifty spatula. We're giving his pan a test flight here in the shop. Nate's wife, Allie, has been using it at home and likes it. So I hope that you enjoy seeing his space, seeing his really nicely restored old blacksmith tools, and getting a look at some of what he does in his sort of interpretation of the oldest and most honorable craft. So I'm going to pay attention to this steak, make sure I don't sear it a little too much on one side. I hope you guys enjoy getting a look at Ryan's place and what he does. And I'll check back in with you about the time this steak is done and you've got to look at one more Southern Oregon blacksmith. For me, I mean, it's like I have 20 years worth of metalworking experience in, in uh, uh, welding shops and stuff. And so this is just sort of like the artistic side of that. Yeah. And it's so great. I, I really love it. Like really what it boils down to is I wanted a work from home business where I could work from home and I wanted to be able to sell a product online. So I'm yes. not relying on this local community because the jobs here are nim to nil. Yeah. And so I really wanted to be able to branch out and have a product I could sell online. Yeah. So when I figured out about the cookware, it clicked and I was like, it just clicked in my head one day. I was like, I need to make cookware. I make most of everything else myself. So we might as well make our own cookware. And I knew that there would be this huge market for it because like the food and culinary world is endless. We're going to start with Racine here. Racine is a power hacksaw who was manufactured in 1943 for the U.S. Navy. Um, and I rebuilt her. She still needs quite a bit of work, but she's a lot of fun to use. The benefits of the power hack saw is that you can cut harder material with it. Oh really? And um, the blades last a lot longer. Copper. Helga's sister, Olga, and she is a fly press uh, manufactured by Waterbury and Farrell, a machine company out of uh, Waterbury, Connecticut, I believe. And to the best of my knowledge, she was also manufactured in the early 1900s, possibly the late 1800s, and she still works just as good as the day she was new. One great thing about the fly press, she can do everything that I need done in the shop, including pressing out the frying pans. So if the power ever goes out, this would be my go-to tool for forging and everything else. Now we're gonna put the maker's mark in it. This is the copper, and we're gonna work the copper cold because it's so soft that I barely have to press on it to get the maker's mark.
Beverly here is going to cut out our stainless steel spatula blanks. And I really love this tool because it's super quiet and relaxing to work with compared to using a grinder. And it's really the only way to cut copper, thick copper efficiently. So. Okay, now we're going to put the bend on the spatula body part. And you can tell a lot of this stuff I do, I don't use measurements, I just go by eye. And I've made hundreds of these things, so I just get good at eyeballing it. Um, there's really no way to measure very accurately these hand-formed curves and angles and stuff. And so this step, I started out doing it this way, and then I made a fancy jig for the fly press to bend them. And they just weren't coming out as accurately I was messing up a lot more of them so this again just proves that doing it by eye is a good way to go Okay, now we're at the rivet station. Everything here is specialized for riveting. And I got my two different sizes of drill bits I use for my two different rivets. I use brass rivets for the um, skillets, and I use copper rivets for the spatulas and the smaller utensils, the ladles and stuff like that. And one reason I don't center punch is because I find that by not center punching, it gives you the ability to walk the hole left or right and do fine adjustments to get it centered even after you've started the bit. There we have an all copper straight shooter spatula. Carbon steel pans actually outdate the cast iron pans. So before cast iron was a thing, they were hand shaping uh, steel oh. pans. This was the old fashioned way of making pans back in the day and a blacksmith would make them. So uh, very traditional. And after I was a diehard cast iron fan and they're great, but then I started using the carbon steel and I learned that Professional chefs all around the world, this is what they use in the kitchen because it heats up fast, it cools down fast, you can get a perfect sear on things, it makes a better nonstick surface than cast iron, mm. and it's just a, a great all around workhorse in the kitchen. And it basically performs almost exactly like cast iron, but with some slight uh, performances, improvements, you know, um, and it's also lighter weight. Yeah. Um, and you can still put them in the oven. I mean, it's, it has yeah. all the same benefits as cast iron. But you can find me on Instagram. That's where I pretty much have all my customers. Instagram is Stagecoach Farm Forge. And you can find me on there. Um, if you look me up on YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel is Stagecoach Farm and Forge on YouTube. 
And you can find my website at www.stagecoachforge.com. I don't know how people estimate how done a steak is. I pulled it off there, it looked great. It was just a little pink for me. I threw it back in for, I don't know, maybe 60 seconds and now it seems about right. But in any case, it's delicious. And uh, I'm not gonna talk very long because I'm ready to eat this thing, right? I mean, this pan appears to be tough and it got hot and it's non-stick and I like it. I might try my hand at making one. Because after all, from the beginning of recorded history, one of the big things that blacksmiths had to make from time to time was cookware. Spoons and knives and forks and ladles and pans and pots. It all came out of a blacksmith shop. Hopefully one that was a little closer to the cleanliness of Ryan's than the disorder of mine. But I think I could probably get it done. And I think right now I'm inspired to try it. I may never learn to cook, but I think I am going to learn something about how to make cookware. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.